in this tutorial, we'll build a simple soundboard app where we, on a smartphone screen, can click individual buttons and then have it play back different sounds. So in this case, we'll just be using this picture of a keyboard and some headphones. I've done all the initial setup already. So we have our AR camera and we have our image target. The AR camera has the license and all the configuration is already set up. To see how to do all of that setup, you can refer back to one of my earlier videos about AR tracking. So what we will start out to do here is we will add a few boxes, just 3D boxes to this image target that will then be tracked. So right click the image target and choose create 3D object cube. I will scale it down and I will position about six of these over this image here. Hitting control D to duplicate. So what we want this to be is we want these to be buttons basically. So we'll use a 3D object as a button and then we'll calculate ray casts onto these buttons to figure out if they have been pressed or not. So we'll have to rename these into our button names. So I'll just call them but my button one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we have all our buttons ready. Now we'll do the script. So select your image target, go into the add component and let's just call it sound controller or sound con. Another thing we need is a audio source. So add component and add the audio source. So I'll double click my script file. And now here we are inside of Visual Studio. So initially what we want to do is we want to set up a audio clip array. So an array that will hold the different audio clips for the different buttons that we want to use. So set up a public audio clip and the square brackets here will tell it that it's an array and we'll give it the name of a clips. We'll need to set up another public variable as well, which is now the audio source so that we can refer to our audio source. So we'll say public audio source and I'll just call it my audio source. So because in this case, I want to work with something called a switch case, I also need a string that defines my button name. So we will get to that a bit later, but just set up a string and we'll call it btn name. So in the start function here, what we want to set up is we want to figure out our audio source. So we'll say my audio source is equal to get component and the component we want to get is the audio source. So that's the basic setup. What we need to do now is we need to inside of the update statement here, we need to set up an if statement that looks for the touch input. So we'll say if input dot touch count is greater than zero and input dot touches array zero. We'll look for the phase. And if this array is equal to touch phase dot began, we will now execute the code here. So what this does is it checks if touch has been activated and if the phase is set to touch phase began. This means that it'll only activate once and only when you press it. So it won't just iterate through touches every time the update is. Otherwise, you would basically, if you click and hold the screen, you would basically be pressing as many times as the update function runs, which is once per frame. So what we need inside of this if statement is we need to look for a ray casting. So we'll set up a ray, we'll call it ray, we'll set this equal to our camera dot main. So the main camera, and we'll look for the screen point to ray. And the parameters here should be our input, of course and it's the dot get touch and it'll look for the zero with the position. Then we'll check if there has been a hit of the ray onto a certain object. So we'll say ray cast hit, we'll call that hit. And now we'll need another if statement. This if statement will check if the ray cast has actually hit. So if, and this is in the physics dot ray cast, and we'll be looking for a ray and it's out and it's the hit that we're looking for. So inside of this if statement here, we can set up our uh, button name because now we can actually look for if the hit has hit our actual button name. So we'll say btn name. This is the string that we just set up in our initial setup up here. And we'll set that equal to a hit.transform name. And now we can set up our switch case that can now look for our specific button. By the way, remember to add all of the parentheses. So you could of course do this with a if statement, but a switch case is a bit more elegant and we don't have to define all the specific game elements because here we can basically use the switch case to do a search for a specific name of a game object. So if you set up the switch case with uh, the keyword switch and then in the parentheses, it wants its trigger. So the specific case, so that's our button name. And now we can set up all of our different cases. So we'll say case and we'll be looking for my button number one for the first case. Here we need a colon and then we'll say 
my audio source dot clip and we'll say that we want to load from the array the a clips zero because an array starts at zero and we'll say my audio source dot play so we'll play it back and it doesn't need any parameters so what you need to do for every case is you need to set up a break at the end so this is our case for button one we basically want a case for all of our six buttons and then at the end we need a default case as well so what we can do is we can just take the case here and we can copy paste it five extra times and we'll just rename these so button two in this case and then three four five and six we also of course need to change the clip here so we'll say clip number one instead two three four and five so after the last break here we'll add a default state we don't want to add anything specific to the default state so it does nothing at default and then the final break as well. Remember to add a parenthesis at the end of this. So this is basically the code that we need. So let's save the document and go back into Unity. So inside of Unity here, we now have our script loaded over here and it should automatically prompt you with the A clips. So you can set a size of this array here. We'll set it to six, which should also give us six new elements that we can actually use. And it also has the audio source. So for the audio source, we'll just say the image target and we'll drag it into the audio source, so my audio source here, and it should propagate it with our audio source from the object itself. Now I'll just take uh, sound files that I have and just drop them into my project folder here. So these are some sound files that I just found on freesound.org. So in this ca case, Lucky Lux uh, just uploaded like keyboard notes, and we'll try to add these to our different button effects. So image target again, and we have our six audio clips here. So drag each and every one into these slots here. So that's basically it. So now we could of course test it with our webcam that the tracking works, but because we're looking for touch inputs, we can't actually test it with our webcam. So we will either have to set up a input for the mouse click or we would have to build it to an Android phone. So let me do a quick build and then I will show you how it works on the phone. So as you can see here, we now have a raycasting uh, soundboard where we can press the individual buttons that is tracked through augmented reality using Vuforia. So thank you for watching everyone.